Hey guys, today we're diving into the latest buzz in memory tech, DDR5 and its intriguing cousin, the non-binary DDR5. It's not just about faster speeds anymore, it's about redefining what memory can do for us. The DDR5 standard and non-binary memory are evolving concept in the realm of computing, particularly with the data center and high performance computing environments. Traditional DDR5 memory modules follow a binary capacity progression, doubling in size at each step. For example, 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes, etc. This has been the standard for memory capacities for many years, simplifying manufacturing and compatibility across different systems. Non-binary DDR5 memory, on the other hand, introduces capacity that don't strictly follow the doubling rule. For instance, non-binary DDR5 DIMMs can have capacities like 24, 48, and 96 gigabytes. This departure from the binary norm allows for more flexible and cost-effective memory configurations, especially in environments where memory needs don't align neatly with the binary progression of the capacities. Non-binary DDR5 memory uses 24 gigabit DRAM chips instead of the 16 gigabit chips commonly found in the standard DDR5 memory, providing these unconventional capacities. Non-binary DDR5 memory stands out for its cost-saving potential, particularly appealing to the enterprise and prosumer markets. It allows for custom-sized memory upgrades, like opting for 48GB module instead of the overspending on 64GB one, perfectly aligning with the user needs without extra cost. This flexibility is especially beneficial for enthusiasts and professionals seeking optimal performance without unnecessary expenditure. This is very important when you work at scale. As an example, if you're building a video editing machine and expect to use anywhere between 30 and 40 gigabytes of memory, then it might prove to be more efficient to buy a 48 gigabyte set over the traditional 64 gigabytes. There are some downsides too, such as compatibility concerns, as some systems and applications may not fully support these unconventional capacities, at least for now. There also could be potential challenges in memory optimization and management, as the non-standard sizes may not perfectly align with certain hardware and software configurations, potentially affecting performance. The other problem is availability. Since this is still a pretty novel thing, there are a limited number of kits available, which means there's less competition, and there could be less deals, so make sure you do your research ahead of time. While technically you can mix and match both standard and non-binary memory, it is not really recommended. When it comes to performance, we actually have two kits from Kingston. The first one is 32 gigabytes of standard DDR5, and the second kit is 48 gigabytes of the non-binary type. They both have exactly the same speeds, which are 7200 mega transfers and the same CL38 timings, which are pretty fast. Our only task was to check for the non-binary memory support for our motherboard, flash the latest BIOS, and then pit them against each other. I really wish that I could tell you that we were taken aback by the results or that we ended up with a letdown. The reality is actually super boring, in a good way. The two different sets of memory are not really that different at all and actually perform within the margin of error. Check out these results from Cinebench R23. The single core scores are less than 1% apart, and multi core scores are about 1.4% apart. The synthetic OCCT test shows almost identical results as well, just a few points difference. When it comes to Fire Strike, it is also marginal, as well as Time Spy Extreme, so we'll skip the lengthy graph analysis. Throughout our extensive testing period, we have encountered two blue screens, but these were infrequent and over a long period of time and overall stability was for the most part solid. It's still unclear whether these were memory related issues or something else entirely. So to sum all of this up, I would say that the addition of the non-binary DDR5 allows for more nuanced memory configurations, which can be more economical. Right now, it is particularly beneficial in a high demand cost sensitive environments like data centers. The fact that this is now available in the consumer market is also a great sign. And with forever growing memory requirements in our day to day life, this will be a good way to upgrade without wasting money on unnecessary capacity. For our tech enthusiasts, what is your dream RAM kit and why? Are you excited about this new memory? Share your opinions in the comments below. Also, if you want to check out any of the items that are covered in the video, the links will be in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.